we've seen some pretty dramatic changes since uh, we did this webinar in April of 2015. And this is an update of the same graph that uh, we talked about earlier in the webinar. And what you see is really beginning in about March, April of 2015, we begin to see a pretty uh, consistent and dramatic drop in both the number of earthquakes and the magnitude of earthquakes. Uh, the last 4.0 that we had was in uh, uh, late May of 2015. We haven't had one since then. And we've seen a general drop off in terms of, uh, of, of activity. You can see a little bit of a bump back on, up at the tail end of the graph there in September. That comes about at about the same time as the 5.8 event down in Pawnee, Oklahoma. But again, in October, things dropped off pretty dramatically. So. Uh, we saw a pretty dramatic change there, and I, and I think we would would uh, uh, say that that was the result of two things. One is obviously the KCC order in in uh, in March of 15 had an effect, and we could see as we looked at those five areas designated by the KCC of zones of seismic concern, we could in effect sort of see the small earthquakes migrate out of those five zones. We still had a fair amount of activity in that area but not as much in the five zones as we as we were seeing previously. So I think it was fairly clear that there was some impact from that order. But probably the bigger event and the more impactful event was just simply that oil prices dropped dramatically uh, about the time of the KCC order in the spring of 2015. And with that, we had less exploration in the area, less uh, production, and the result was, was that there was less salt water to dispose of, so those volumes went down pretty dramatically. So uh, the, both of those factors were in play here. How much you can attribute to one versus the other is, is difficult to say. I think at this point, probably the drop in exploration is, is a, a bigger deal than the KCC order, but they both obviously took place. Now, having said that, I think it's important to remember that we are still having events, that this issue hasn't gone away. And in, uh, in August of 2016, the KCC expanded that order. And this slide shows the original five areas in, in uh, Harper and Sumner counties with the large volume disposal wells within those five areas of seismic concern. And in August of, of 16, the KCC expanded that area to be covered by their order. Uh, into the area shown in blue, and it's dramatically larger, includes a lot of both Harper and Sumner counties, and extends quite a ways farther north than previously. Uh, it's not quite as extensive in terms of cutbacks in the high volumes as, of wells in the, as in the original order, but it is a continuation of, of their response. And I, I think it's a recognition that while the problem has been uh, is significantly less on this side of the border, uh, it, it hasn't gone away. And one important message I'd like to maybe leave with here today is that w one of the things that everybody involved in this process knows is that oil prices are going to go back up again. And when they go back up again, we may very well be faced with the same issue of, of what to do with large volumes of, of salt water from, in terms of uh, disposal wells. And uh, what, what I, I've urged in this process is that we, we keep that in mind. And as people make decisions about uh, permitting related to disposal wells, that, that we take a look at the, at the issue and, and not view it as a problem solved, as long as we're still having felt earthquakes, and in some cases, uh, fairly large earthquakes by our standard, uh, until we're back in sort of the pre-seismic days of, say, 2009, 2010, I think it's important to keep an eye on those issues. So this August order from the KCC is their latest attempt to uh, continue to do that. And uh, we'll see where we go from here.